We turn now to Syria, where violence near Damascus continued today. Syrian forces supported by Russian-backed air power are fighting in eastern Ghouta, the last rubble-held area near the capital. Tens of thousands of people are fleeing the area, which has been besieged for weeks. More than 1,300 civilians have been killed, and as many as 400,000 people remain trapped. The violence in Ghouta is just the latest battle in a war that marked its seventh anniversary this week. An estimated 5 million Syrians have fled the country, while the death toll is estimated at a staggering half a million people. As the country slides past this grim milestone, there appears to be very little progress in resolving the conflict. Philip Issa has been covering the war for the Associated Press, and he joins me now via Skype from Beirut. With all the destruction and devastation and foreign influence in Syria, what do the Syrians who you speak to think about Syria, the country itself now? I mean, is it even is it the same country that it was? Will it ever be the same country again? I think it's it's almost too early to to talk about where the country is heading because there are so many variables and there are so many moving parts, there are so many sides that want uh, to see their own interests realized inside Syria. Among the Syrians that I'm speaking to, the ones who have left Syria and the ones who have the means to to stay abroad uh, generally are choosing to do so. Um, they say that their country no longer looks, it's no longer something that they recognize, it no longer looks recognizable, it looks alien to them and they're gonna stay out uh, for the foreseeable future. The United Nations is again debating how to respond to this latest round of violence in Syria. We saw them issue a ceasefire last month. It was broken within about a day. I mean, is there any sense that the UN has any power now to do anything that will make a difference in Syria? No, there's not that sense. I mean, the Syrians inside, inside Syria, the ones who are trapped in the siege in Huta and Afrin, uh, they want action, um, and they realize that, that action speaks louder than words. Um, and, and to them, what the UN, the Security Council resolution, is simply ink on paper unless if it's enforced. And seven years of crisis, uh, seven years of war in Syria, we've seen that there is very little will in the international community to actually enforce uh, the resolutions that the Security Council passes to, to enforce the international laws uh, that apply, the war, laws of war that apply here. There have been moments throughout this conflict over the years where it seemed like, okay, maybe now there will be a, resolu a resolution to this. I mean, over the last year, the Islamic State um, was defeated in Syria, and it seemed like, okay, maybe now this will be a time when the conflict can end. But we haven't seen that happen. I mean, why not? Well, the Islamic State was a common foe for a lot of different sides that actually uh, don't have much in common. They have opposing uh, goals. They have opposing aims. So without without that common enemy, we have all the different sides in Syria now getting back to running out for their own aims, uh, whether that's, uh, that's Russia and Iran trying to set up zones of influence or the United States uh, trying to support its allies in the war against the Islamic State, which was the Kurds, or you have uh, Turkey, which is trying to suppress Kurdish autonomy. I mean, that's what's happened. Once you remove the Islamic State from the equation, uh, all these groups have, have, have just started fighting each other again. All right. Philip East of the Associated Press, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure.